The first step in replicating any costume is creating the understructure for it. But in this case, it's also a historical project, which means I wanted to create the proper undergarments. I am making a chemise and a pair of drawers, which is sort of a combo of bloomers and underwear. For both of these garments, I wanted to add some style and prettiness to them, of course, so I did some lace insertion, lace edging, and many pin tucks. Once the undergarments were finished, it was on to the corset. I decided to try out self-drafting the pattern, and overall it worked, though it's not a perfect pattern, but it still achieved the proper result. I drafted the pattern based on this corset, and then made it out of cotille with a fashion layer of silk taffeta, the same silk which will be used for the outer dress. The final steps were inserting the synthetic whalebone and then doing some detail flossing, which helps keep the boning tips in place and is also decorative. Next, onto a quick making of a corset cover, which helps smooth out the lines of the corset underneath. With fall more than officially here, it is the perfect time to get into healthy routines. And with Care Of, who provides supplement subscription services, it makes the whole process so much easier to stick to a consistent vitamin routine. They create personalized vitamin packets, which makes it perfect for on the go, but also it saves all the time of sorting out your vitamins into those little daily like bucket things, it just saves so much time altogether. And when your packets are placed in a convenient location, there's really no excuse to not take your vitamins for the day, which I am definitely um, very bad at. I have tried so many times to be consistent with taking vitamins and it just doesn't happen. It just, it gets complicated. Go to Care Of's website at takecareof.com and take their quiz and find out what's recommended for you. Then use my code BELLAMAY50 for 50% 50 off your first order. We've still got some more structure to make and that's for the skirt. I'm making an elliptical crinoline. I just started messing around with some eighth inch steel boning and twill tape. Once the desired shape was achieved, I marked everything and then covered my boning in thin twill tape casing. Then it got reassembled and all the points were secured in place with these small studs. To help keep the large back of this crinoline in place, I created a bump pad stuffed with shavings placed under the top hoops, which solves that problem, plus it creates more of a bustle. Next up, a cotton petticoat. The main section is gathered at the waist, and then I'm creating these slight bustles along the back, which sort of look like the original dress, but also is based on this drawing of an historical petticoat. To the bottom of this section, I'm pleating a large section of fabric using a pleating board and then pressing the pleats in place with a combo of vinegar and starch. This will help permanently set these pleats. It's finally time to start working on something which will be visible, or at least a few inches of it will be. That's one more petticoat, this time made of silk, and will peek out the bottom of the dress. The upper section is made of the same silk as the outer dress, and then I box pleated some darker pink silk for the bottom. This is also permanently set with a mix of vinegar and starch. All the undergarments are now complete and it's finally time to move on to the actual dress. First up, the skirt. This is made of many, many yards of silk taffeta interlined with a fine cotton and an overlay of fine netting. The waist is pleated and then attached to a waistband and the bustles are created. These bustles were made using twill tape to gather up the section and then vertical strips of ribbon attached at the waistband down to the lower part of the bustle. It keeps the bustle from sagging with the weight of the skirt. Then a second bustle is created below this one. 
Now it's on to the faced hem, which is hand sewed in place, and then the netting is hemmed by attaching a section of netting, and then at the back of the train, this hem of the netting is gathered up and attached to the silk hem. I also attached a dust ruffle underneath to help keep the silk from getting dirty on the floor. Before attaching the flowers, I'm first going to make the bodice. This was self-drafted and is mostly cut on a bias. Piping is inserted in some of the seams during the assembly, and then at the end, boning is inserted to help keep the bodice smooth. Onto the lace detail on the bodice. It's a combination of a few different laces and nettings, and I just played around with it until it looked good. And then some tiny pink flowers help finish up the look. Onto the skirt flowers. To create the perfect flowers, I used a combination of several different flowers to try and create the most accurate large flowers as possible. Now these, along with some smaller flowers, are sewn to the skirt just below the bustles. On the lower bustle, I also created some ribbon and added some lace underneath to replicate the original. For one final special touch, I'm attaching Swarovski crystals. But these are not just any crystals, these are the exact same crystals used on the original dress in the movie. Mr. Cook, who worked on the costumes, had these leftover crystals from the project and somehow found me on Instagram making this dress and graciously offered to sell them to me. So how amazing is that? The actual crystals from the original dress are gonna be used on my dress. And with that, the dress is complete. Though I also did paint some shoes, embellish a mask, and make hair pieces for the wig. Now this entire project is officially complete.